So here's a bowl I just threw using the Speedball Boss base to open up the clay. Uh, it, I don't know, four pound, three, four pounds? I don't know, I didn't weigh it. But I got another lump right here. So let's just scoot this one off and put it to the side and let's do another one. So I uh, am going to be, well gosh, I will have probably by the time this goes up or maybe I'll put this as part of it, but I'm gonna be taking over Speedball's social media a little bit on Tuesday, September 3rd so that I can um, share the love of the boss base, which is this tool right here. And I got the pink one. Now, a few years ago, I got the green. I think it was two years ago. And I do use that a lot. And it's on my other wheel. So I thought the pink would go, and this is my porcelain wheel. So P, pink, porcelain, right? It all works. So we'll do a quick little throwing. So let's just get this centered. So the boss base is not a centering tool. It's an opening up tool. If you're looking for a centering tool, I've got lots of other options. I mean, we have the strong arm, which is an amazing centering tool for large amounts of clay. But the boss base is for smaller amounts, which is great because you can easily center one or two or three pounds of clay, which we have, oh gosh, I would say three pounds here. And that's centered. Now, if you want, you can make it a little, we could go a little flatter, a little wider. But remember, if you do that, you're gonna have to make a piece that isn't as tall. So I want my sidewalls to be good sized. So we're gonna go ahead and just leave it as is. I'm gonna clean off the boss base. It's a little messy, it's, it's okay, it's clay. I like to get it wet. Let's go ahead and just put it about in the center. I mean, you can go ahead and bind the center yourself. Ta-da! And then you just press straight down. Until you hit and pull back. Now, because it's dry and there's no water in there, it skips a little, so you could put a little water in if you want. See how much smoother that is with a little bit of water? And then for this rim, I'm just gonna compress it just a bit. And then we're gonna pull up. So we just opened. Nice even floor in there, that's nice. It was easy to get. So if you struggle with getting an even floor, maybe you're making your floor too thick, maybe you're making it too thin, this could be the thing for you to get your gauge right. So we're just gonna pull up the walls. What are we gonna make? Is it gonna be a bowl? Is it gonna be a planter? Get some of that water out of the inside. I think it's gonna be a bowl. There's our height. Let's go ahead and do some shaping. You know, sometimes with porcelain, I find it's easier to shape with a rib than my fingers because porcelain is so soft that your fingers almost have too much pressure. And the rib allows you to spread that pressure out across a wider area. So let's go ahead and do our shaping with a rib. I also like using the rib to shape because it gets rid of these throw marks so that I can carve. But I have been throwing pots that I'm leaving the throw marks in today. I used to do that a lot, especially when I do reduction firing because I don't use many glazes and the throw marks show it off. They show the glaze off. All right, I can already tell the porcelain is reaching its end of what it can take as far as workability. That is one of the downsides of porcelain. 
It's okay though, you just learn to work with it and sometimes I'll set a piece to the side and come back to it later and once it's stiffened up a tiny bit. But we're just gonna do a little shaping here at the bottom. Pull up a little bit. I'm gonna flare my rim out right here. and just smooth the inside as well a little bit. I wonder if you all can hear my crickets. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be nice. I'm putting more volume in here. Somewhere it got a little off center, but that's okay. All right, let me go ahead and put a little shadow line detail in here. that to shape my rim. That looks very nice. So with bowls, when you get to larger sizes like this, you want to leave that little skirt or apron of clay on there until you trim it because if we take that off now it's actually sometimes some of it supporting the wall down here so i'm just going to take this knife and do a small undercut sometimes i'll go in with the back end too and take a little more off and i can clean that up too now this undercut will take away some of the clay, but also it helps guide the wire because I do want to cut this off. And the last thing, since we did throw this bowl, well, it depends, right? I like a little throw swirl in the bottom, but sometimes I don't want that in there when I'm carving a piece, but we're going to put it in. So there's our little swirl. Just a little. Check my sidewalls. I think they're good. So we've talked about bowls before and I've done many, many classes on bowls. And we can throw down the wall just to get that really nice inward curve, well, inside curve, really. Because when we talk about bowls, that's the part that matters the most, right? The inside curve, not that outside curve. We trim our bowls to get that outside curve. So if you're struggling with the outside curve, stop, focus more on the inside curve. That's what matters. Because you don't trim the inside of a bowl ever. You never do that. That looks nice in there. All right, last we will take And I'm using a piece of chamois that's sitting, it's attached to a film canister. It's really long. I don't know why I have it so long. I think chamois changed over the years too. That chamois is really rough. All right, I think we're good. Yeah, so now just clean off the bat. This is just a little housekeeping thing so that when I sit it somewhere else, I'm not putting so much clay all over the place. And then we cut it off. Just like that. And we'll let it dry. And then we'll be back to trim it. Oh, it's nice. It's a really nice size, isn't it? 